Alexander, I want to ask you about uh, how this is playing out. Uh, Macron on the world stage here, talking to European leaders, but also with a direct line to the Kremlin and a hope to try and achieve peace at some point. If you think back to former French presidents, they were barely able to manage the domestic political situation and their own scandals, let alone take a, a pivotal position in such a, a geopolitical crisis. Just give us a sense as to whether you think this plays with French voters who may be concerned about their own pocket around the oil energy story. Well, yes, I, I think the president here has, has a dual obligation. He has an obligation to stay the president of France for as long as he needs to, as long as he has to, and for as much and put as much effort as possible because of this huge crisis that we're going through. And at the same time, when he can, he has to be the candidate to outline the vision that he's been carrying, the vision that he's been proposing for France since 2017, and that he's now proposing for the next term, um, for the next uh, five years. Yeah. And obviously, this is, this is an exercise in balance between those two exercises, but he is a fundamental figure in the crisis that we have today. He's not only the president of France, he's also the president of the European Council at the moment. He has a relationship that he's built over years with Vladimir Putin, which he's trying to leverage to try and solve some of those issues like securing nuclear facilities in Ukraine and um, like creating those humanitarian corridors. And as he says, you know, you have to try and try and try again, um, independently of disappointments along the way and being very realistic about the prospects of, uh, of success. But it's imperative that somebody continues to try and do so things while building a very strong and um, a strong and sustainable um, response to, to the, the Russian invasion of Ukraine. Alexander, if I could just dive into the weeds around the campaign, I mean, and what could derail it? There have already been calls from the right, and in particular some of the, the right-wing media, that there should be a delay to the hosting of uh, these round ones and round two type of elections because of the situation around Ukraine, which has effectively stolen the narrative. I mean, that's been peddled by the right, which, of course, is a Le Pen constituency. But I also want to ask you about the, the debate format, because a lot of people are saying they, they want to hear the debate still. They want democracy to play out in France, even though Macron has his hands full. How does he tackle this where the public is still crying out so, for some form of a dialogue before the election? Well, I think there is a dialogue. The first thing is the, the presidential campaign has been going on for a while. You know, the, the candidates on the right and on the left have been selected for over six months now and have been outlining programs for over six months. So there's been quite a, a large debate um, related to the presidential campaign for the past months, uh, objectively. Um, and secondly, I think your reporter outlined that the president has been very clear that he wants a campaign which is with the French and about the French, which is not about politicians sort of fighting off each other and having arguments which are self-centered. It's about the French. And so the president has immediately gone to see the French voters, French mayors, and is going to campaign directly with them as much as possible to have that dialogue and to have that unfiltered dialogue, to have that exchange with them. Because let's be very objective. People in Europe and people in France are very concerned by the crisis and they deserve that democratic debate today. It's an absurd suggestion that we should delay elections. I'm not aware of any country in Western Europe or in the US who would consider delaying elections because of a crisis in Ukraine. It's an absurd suggestion, but we need that democratic debate and it is going to happen. It is happening right now. I'm on air with you talking about it because it is happening. Sir, can I ask you, because um, this first mandate of Emmanuel Macron has been marked by extraordinary events, and the first half of it was a lot of strikes, there was the Gilets jaunes events, then it was the pandemic, now there's geopolitical crisis. Um, there's a question whether there's this kind of social um, element that is it kind of a discontent that we saw in the first half of his mandate, and now we see high energy prices and sort of lower purchasing power. That could be an issue for whoever is elected uh, in, in just a few weeks. So could there be this kind of social discontent rising again, uh, potentially for the second mandate of Emmanuel Macron, if he is re-elected, or has he learned the lesson from this first mandate and now the situation is different? Well, I think that the, the point you're, you're, you're making is, is a very important one. What needs to happen in the democratic debate is for uh, different politicians, different candidates to set out a vision for what's going to happen in the next five years. And Emmanuel Macron at the moment is the only one to do so, to be very clear that this is about continuing, continuing the reform agenda that we've set up in 2017, and which has generated real, very concrete results. Unemployment in France is at its lowest in the last three decades. Investment in France is up like it's never been in two decades. Um, industrial creation of employment is up. Apprenticeship is up. So there's, there's an economic 
um, result of those, those five years. And the president has been very clear. We're going to continue down the line of this shared prosperity model. And at the same time, we're going to continue down the line, as you mentioned, of building an independent Europe, a sovereign Europe, a Europe which says that the means to defend itself. And that's a very clear vision for the mandate to come. And the president is outlining now what are the steps we're going to take concretely over the next five years to continue this. Now, one of the points you mentioned is about the method of how we go about those very structural changes um, in our, 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 our system, in our, in our politics. And the president has been very clear. He wants to associate the French in those discussions so that built as, me, as much consensus as possible so that we can move forward to deal with some of those key challenges that you mentioned um, and that all European countries and the US are feeling, you know, the rise of inflation, increasing energy prices, uh, and so forth. So I think it's very important that there's this point of method. The president has said we're going to associate everyone, but there's an ambition for the next five years. We're going to continue reforming. We're going to continue building the France that we want for our children and the Europe that we want for our children.